Well, hello, boys and girls. This is Pearl of Wisdom here from my NHL Pearls of Wisdom as part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, of course. If you like all sports, all four major sports, and all the teams within those four major sports, you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Don't let the name fool you. It's all the sports, all the teams. Check it out. Okay, we're going to be doing trade talk again. We did JT Miller. We did a free agent one with Forsberg just recently. We also did Capo Caco. Go check that out and many, many more that you can be part of if you sub up right now. So I put it out there and asked some people on my channel, who would you like to hear next? And the big one that kept on coming up was a guy named Josh Anderson in Montreal. There has been talk about his availability at the it has said that there's been people calling about Josh Anderson. Uh, now, it's funny. Why would people be calling about Josh Anderson if he's not available, you say? Well, Montreal is in a spot where it looks like they're rebuilding. They traded Lekkanen. They traded a few other guys that are veteran got veterans for prospects. Um, so why not Josh Anderson as well? He's 28 years old, and we'll look at Josh Anderson a little further. And... Uh, Maybe they would be willing to give up something for that as well. So we'll look at two articles as the possibility of this happening. And I know we're going to get a lot of people saying two things. They all, he already said he's not wanting to trade Josh Anderson. That would be huge. And Josh Anderson says he wants to stay. So we're going to look at those two things and why that doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to get traded. One reason why he said the same thing about the other guys. So <laughs> like it didn't want to get traded either. And uh, Hughes didn't want to, said he didn't want to trade him, but he did. Okay, uh, so anyways, Josh Anderson himself, that is an interesting guy because if you're an analytics person and also just eye test, I if you really watch defensive hockey, I personally love it, love watching defensive hockey. Um, I, I don't really pay I, – I like hitting, but I don't like hitting where you put out a position to hit. Josh Anderson, to me, does it way too much for me to pay him $5.5 million a year. He's pretty much a fourth-line player with a really good shot that can happen to score if you put him on the higher – you know, he'll score 20 to 25 – 20 to 23 on the top six. That's not enough for me for how poor he is defensively. So for me, he's not my flavor, but he, probably, he might be yours out there as well. I know there's a lot of general managers that don't pay attention to analytics or see far more value, still see a lot of value in a guy that just punishes guys in the corners. And uh, there is value in it, but is there that much value in it? That's debatable. Well, we won't go any further than that. We will look at what maybe the teams would be interested what Mr. Hughes would be looking for in return and why maybe he may get traded. Well, all of those things. We'll also look at his Josh Anderson's numbers and all that. Now, another reason why I decided to take this on was because I just mentioned analytics. Gorton, who to me really is the general manager of Montreal, but that's debatable, I suppose, is a heavy analytics general manager. A lot of the reason why I think he was left off the Rangers is they decided that they didn't want to go the analytics route. And if you look some of the ways things that Drury did after he was gone, that certainly seems to be the case. But Gorton is. And I'm pretty sure Gorton knows analytically for sure. Josh Anderson's not very good defensively. In fact, he's pretty bad defensively. And Gorton likes players that can play both ends of the ice. So I think it's very possible. Now, before I go on, we'll just go look at what Mr. Hughes is saying and all of that sort of thing like that. And a really good article here. Okay. Literally minutes after the announcement of the trade, Shea Weber, that was Shea Weber for D D Donuff. By the way, D D Donuff is terrible, but that we'll get into that some other time. You might say, well, why would he want Dodonov then if he doesn't care about analytics? Dodonov is going to, it was just a case he's going to be off the books next year. They're just getting rid of cap space. Uh, he obviously talked about a trade in question, Josh Anderson. Several teams, he says, called about Josh Anderson, 
since he hasn't been traded, it can show you how much we love Josh and want him in the Canadians organization. Interesting. He said the same thing about Lekkonen. He said the same thing about other players that were traded. Uh, but, you know, it's if, if I'm a general manager, I'm not going to devalue my asset. You know, if Gordon's like, hey, we're open to it, Kent Hughes is not going to be like, yeah, yeah, we're open to it. Why? Why would you do that? You have to, you're going to, you know, say, we don't want to get rid of this guy because that's how you're going to get value. You're going to have to strip him away from us. Regarding the speculation that Josh Anderson could be traded, Kent Hughes said he has no intention of trading him, but he also said he would not turn down any opportunity to improve his team, which is a stock answer from any good general manager. It really doesn't tell you all that much at all, to tell you the honest truth. Clearly, clearly Hughes cares about Anderson. He doesn't want to trade him. No, that's not clear to me at all. Just because he said that doesn't mean nothing to me, honestly. It doesn't really mean much. Uh, the fact that people are calling about him and he's still willing to listen, if he said, I'm not willing to listen, that's different. You know, that's different. Uh, see, oh, here, it even mentions it in a, it reminds me of Arturi Lekkanen when he's still a Montreal Canadian player. That's right. That's what he said about Arturi Lekkanen. Didn't want to trade him. See, if you say that, you cover so many, you cover so many bases. Because if you decide not to trade him, the guy's happy that you like him. If you decide to trade him, uh, the, you're, you're trying to get as much value as you possibly can. So you can stretch that line as much as you possibly can. And you can say, look, you know, we, di we didn't want to, but we, we really can't give up this offer. So it looks good on every single angle. Now, who was this? Should I, I should give you who this was that wrote this if I have it up here. Oh, that was actually in uh, just Marco from Hockey HF. Great site. Okay. Now, we'll look at hockey news, the hockey news. Uh, he, Montreal Canadiens manager Ken Hughes is expected to move to the one or two veterans for cap space, which they already, I mean, which, I, you know, Weber obviously ha happened, Petrie, Christian Dvorak, Mike Hoffman. Josh Anderson, meanwhile, is also garnering attention at the trade deadline. The 28-year-old appeared in Daily Faceoff's list of potential trade targets. Daily Faceoff, Sarah Valley with Daily Faceoff. That guy's really built up some inside stuff, and he's really built up a trust with organizations. If he's put him in there as a, a potential off-seed trade target, he's probably talked to people involved to say, do you mind if I do this? So if they don't mind that, I'm not necessarily, but Cerevelli is really building up, building up a reputation with the league. And to do that, you really want to get an okay from organizations before you just run off stuff like this. Uh, Montreal Hockey Now, Mark D'Amico cited Sportsnet Elliot Friedman telling Oilers, Oilers Stoffer, he considers Anderson a hot commodity. Right. He's going to be hot. He's going to be a commodity. And he's going to be brought up in a lot of trade talks because people like his physicality. I could certainly see the Oilers wanting a guy like him if they can't get Kane because it doesn't appear that they care too much about defense. And they look like physical guys that can score and run up and down the wings. So he'd be perfect for them. But uh, he's not on the list of teams that we would be going to for that for several reasons. As it's mentioned here, they don't really have the draft picks and stuff like that. So what it also mentions here, An idea that they would, uh, the Islanders would offer up. Okay, we're we, we're going to do the Islanders here. Here we go. Here it is. Uh, Hughes may be getting calls for Josh Anderson, but that doesn't mean he'll move him. If he does, we determine the, his asking price to be, you know, somewhere in the Toffoli type area, where you get a good NHL player, a quality prospect, and draft pick in return. 
There you go. I agree. That's probably what he's looking for. I personally wouldn't give it up, but other teams may. So we're going to look at what teams may. And part of the reason why I'm taking some of these teams is I, I get the impression, or at least I'm not sure, that they're analytics-driven. If a team was analytics-driven, I think it's less likely they're going to pick up somebody like Josh Manson. Okay, Josh Anderson, I should say. Josh Manson. Um, so what would they want in return? Honestly, I think Montreal would – I'm going to look at Montreal here. I think Montreal would be happy with just about any position. What you know, For sure, you'd love to have a center – more than anybody, you know, but really they, they could help have help in any position whatsoever. I just wanted to quickly look at it. Um, I, I would think that they want to build from the defense out. It appeared that Gordon did that in with the Rangers. So maybe they would want to do that here. However, I'm not so sure that it's hard to get defensemen for wingers, but we're going to look at it. And of course, here's uh, now Josh, Josh's contract situation, $5.5 million until 2027 he's 28 years old right now he's from burlington ontario 6'3 227 that's what people love right he's huge he's a big big man and he, when he hits you it hurts and that's what people really want to see uh, they think you know that's going to be important in the playoffs and it is to a point but if you look at like the colorado avalanche right now who does that for them not really anybody it's done they have the best two-way forwards in the league that's what they have. And they're not overly all that punishing, but they don't back down either. That's what I like. Um, so 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, till he's 32 years old. Got to remember that. He had some serious injuries in the past, but I don't think, and he's also got a 18 no trade list. We don't know who that, what's who's on that list. So we're just going to basically go like this. If one of the teams were on the list, then, I guess there's no way of us knowing really which teams are on the list. So, 30, this is his point production. His best year was 2018-19. He then got injured that year, came back and had a decent year, and then ended up being in the Max Domi trade where Montreal signed him to this huge contract. Uh, he had 32 points in 69 games last year. People will point to his minus 25. However, most people, even if they are into plus minus, would say it was a terrible team. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. I don't pay much attention to plus minus, but I do know his expected goals against is atrocious. He's just a bad defensive player. That, that's what I believe. Maybe you don't. I don't. Whatever. Comment in the comment section and tell me what you think. Okay, the first team I have here that may be interested in somebody like Josh Anderson, Anaheim Ducks. Anaheim Ducks, 28 years old, okay? Uh, they are trying to rebuild, but I do not think that Anaheim is looking to be like a Detroit Red Wings rebuild simply because the market wouldn't stand for it. They, they don't have the strength of market than a, that a Detroit does. This is a market that's still building a uh, still building a fan base. And going through that kind of rebuild is just so difficult. And sponsors, for that matter, as well. It's difficult getting sponsors in Anaheim. Probably the bigger one is that sponsors, if they think that there's going to be less people in the building, they're out. You know, there's, in fact, most, I, I would imagine... And I don't know this for a fact, but I would imagine that there is a part of the contract that if you don't have, you get a certain amount of money for how many people are filling those stands. <clears throat> so they're not going to want to hang out too long in this rebuilding mode. They're going to try to do it as fast as possible. They don't have a Josh Anderson type guy in this team, really. Uh, Derek Grant is, you know, probably the closest. He doesn't have the shooting power. He doesn't have... He's also 32 years old. Uh, so they may be interested in somebody like Armstrong. I don't know where they stand analytically as most of their players are. You know, Adam Henrique was pretty poor analytically. Uh, they did go out and get Shattenkirk, who was good analytically. But from what I can tell, it's not. Cam Fowler's fantastic, but they drafted him. Jamie Drysdale's pretty good, especially offensively anyways but they drafted him. I can't say as they 
they went out and got anybody who looks good analytically for the team. Jacob Silverberg has always really been good. And that is kind of who I think that they might be, not Montreal be targeting, but they would be offering. It'd be one of the would be Silverberg. Why would Montreal want a 31 year old Silverberg? Well, it's not all they would want, but he comes off the books in two years and he can play right now as a body right now. And then he's off the books. They would have to give up more than that for sure. No doubt about it. He's a, Anderson can play right wing, so he can play along McTavish, who's also a very physical, unbelievable-looking player. Um, he could play up here with Troy Terry, bring him down with McTavish, and you have a physical presence to go with Zegers and Milano uh, that can protect them, as they like to say, as people like to think that the, they're doing, which I suppose to a certain extent they do. He could play up there. And... Who would you want in return? Well, we just said it's going to be a young player, a prospect, and a first-round pick. It would be a first-round pick probably this year. A young player? I mean, that could be many different players here. Uh, oh, I think they would be interested in Jacob Perot, who really hasn't put up the greatest numbers in the AHL. I don't say they're going to give up on him, but if they're wanting something like this in this deal, he's 20 years old and he really only put up 35 points in like 50 games in the AHL this year. Uh, like I said, he could be a player down the road, no doubt about it. It's not saying we're going to give up, but he was a late first. He's French-Canadian. Now, I'm sure Montreal would be interested. Maybe just those two alone and Silverberg, something like that. Got to be really strong with for Josh Anderson. If you're going to believe what Hughes says, if they extremely value them, they basically are going to wrestle them away from us. That's something that I think the deal would be. You're going to have to really love this guy. He's going to play. He's a unique player. There's not too many guys that are that big that can even play in the league that can score 20 to 20 some goals if you put him up in the top six and all that kind of stuff like that. So. Tell me what you think, Anaheim fans. Would you give up that much for a guy like Josh Anderson? Uh, Jacob Silverberg would only be a player for a short time for them. I don't think that they, they would be in their long-term plans. Might even use him as a trade bait at the deadline to add more picks. If they are, in fact, going that way, and it kind of looks like they do. Okay, next. Calgary Flames. And I bring up the Calgary Flames here because a lot of people don't think so, but I do believe Calgary is, is kind of analytically driven. They pick up players that are strong analytically. Blake Coleman is a good example. Nigel Panny is, although he was drafted. Matthew Kachuk is a beast. Um, and... You notice that Johnny Goudreau is in here, and there's a lot of talk of Johnny Goudreau moving on to other lands. So if he were to do that, that would give them, uh, we should always look at cap space, quite a bit of cap space to work with. Now, why? if I said they're, I think they might be analytics driven, why would they want somebody like Josh Anderson? Call it 26 million tons of cap space. They do have guys to sign Matthew Kachuk being one which is going to cost them quite a bit. If they don't sign Goudreau, then they probably got about 10, 15 million, depending on who else, how else they want to fill out their roster here. Um, but why would they do that? Because Sutter has a way of turning players that are terrible analytically into good players. He ha He's like a friggin' possession coach, always has been. Back in L.A., fantastic possession coach. And he seems to be able to, like, be a whisperer to some of these guys, like Good Branson, for instance, who was terrible all his career, came to Calgary and actually played, had his best year for sure defensively that he's ever had. Um, same as uh, Zadaroff was always good defensively, but he even helped him out in his overall game. Uh, to become absolutely fantastic. Christopher Tanev was always great, also an analytic guy, but uh, he even became better in Calgary. He's fantastic at it. So 
Sutter does like guys that can hit. Sutter does like guys that can score, hit, and all of those things like that. If Goudreau were to leave, they may be interested in somebody like him. I'm sure they would talk to Sutter and Sutter say, can you help this guy out defensively? He'd watch the tape and say, I think I can do it. Let me talk to him, all that kind of stuff like that. So if they could, and they thought they were going to be able to do that, would they have, I mean, we just said first, that first round pick for Anaheim is, I think, 10th overall. So I said maybe it would be just a 10th and Perot would do it because that is a high pick. Calgary, on the other hand, does not have their first this year. It would have to be their first next year if they were going to take draft picks in this, in this case. I think it would have to be, again, they, you know, Montreal likes French Canadians. And when I say that, I'm not saying, you know, it's not like people treat like it's some racist thing. It's not. Montreal is a high tax uh, they have winters that are cold. They have a high, very high income tax. And um, so a lot of people really don't want to go there for that reason. However, French Canadians that are from Montreal live, eat, and breathe. First of all, Montreal is a wonderful city. It's a beautiful city. If you ever go there, man, check it out sometime. It is amazing. I love Montreal. If I was a player, I would take the tax, whatever, so I could live in Montreal. But a lot of people don't see it that way. And a guy like Dylan Dubé, who's from, you know, where, where is he from? Oh, he's actually from British Columbia. I better shut up. I just thought because it was Dubé, he was from, so I'll shut up. That's not right. I thought he was from, remember, I do this off the top of my head. So, I mean, that is, I still would think about him as a possibility. Jacob Pelche, too. Now, that, for sure, is from Quebec, yes. So, you got a possibility of Jacob, Jacob Peltre, who's small, and they already have Dylan Dubé, who's small. Um, they have some smallish players, like Mangiapani and stuff like that. So, maybe Jacob Peltre and uh, next year's first, and possibly, you know, a player as well, because that's what they're asking for. Now, if you're if you're in love with a guy like uh, Josh Anderson, maybe you want to do this deal. Maybe Dubé is part of it because where is he going to fit if you get him? So you take him. Coleman goes down to the second line. You got Josh Anderson, Backlin, and Mangiapani. Kachuk, Lin, home to Foley. There you go. Not to mention to Foley and Josh Anderson know each other. They they can fit into this uh, pretty well together. Uh, because there's already somebody there. So Toffoli could be talking to Josh Anderson and say, come on, Calgary's great, you'll love Sutter, all of those sort of things like that. And then they could have no more pieces if they can't get something done with Goudreau. So I was really surprised. I thought for sure Dylan Dubé was from Montreal. That They're not. So Pelche or Dubé or both or first-round pick, something of that nature. It's going to cost you, though. Maybe Juso Valamaki, depending on how much. He had a tough time last year in Calgary. But, you know, possibly he could be part of that deal because it looks like they're going to have to trade him for sure anyways. Uh, you know, Connor Zari. I, I, I think they love Connor Zari too much. I, I just I don't think that they would want him to be part of that deal at all. They would go, go, They would go in many other directions before they would go that direction. But Jacob Pelche, maybe. He's smaller. He's put up some decent offense. How did he do last year? 62 points in 66 games. It's not bad in the AHL, but for an offensive guy, it's not like off the charts either. So, you know, maybe Montreal would have more about see more value of him being from that area. All right, next, Los Angeles Kings. And I hear this, I mean, when I do these trades i constantly hear from the la kings fans they need more size 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 bigger 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 and they are you know arvidson's a small guy Kempe, he's big but he doesn't play all that big he does drive hard to the net i like him like him a lot i follow not a huge guy uh trevor moore small scrappy but small philip deno is average you know uh they're not a big team. 
You got Blake Lazat, who's just a little guy. And a lot of their bigger guys don't play big. So they're, they want guys that are aggressive, more aggressive. Mostly on defense is where they would want that because they do have a small defense, no doubt about it. They could definitely use size that can play on the defensive side of things. With that being said, you might even be able to expand this and add a defenseman in here to be able to make a deal like this. But, like we said, it's going to be a player on the roster, a pick, maybe not a first. You know, it could be a second-round pick or something like that. And um, a prospect, which they have tons of. You know, you got Alex Turcotte, Jared Dolan Anderson. Uh, Kachev's going back to KHL. A lot of guys that you could put on here. So, I would say... That when when's his contract up? 2024. Maybe Victor Anderson. And I know he's on the older side. But that would be a player for now that they could they could take. You could so you could do that. A prospect. Uh Velarde has had a difficult time getting on the roster there. Uh they look like they're probably gonna trade him. He's a big guy himself. He may fit better in Montreal. Uh, you know, they could give him a shot. I don't think he's got the hugest value here, so you, you would have to add more. But he put up some decent numbers in the AHL. He's still got a lot of upside. And where's he from? Kingston, Ontario. So he's he's from more of that area. And, uh, you know, an actual... He, he would be a player for now, I suppose, and Jared Dolan Anderson or something like that. Would you do a deal like that, your first this year? Do they really need another first this year? It's a late first. Throw one a package of those four things. Not all of them necessarily, but three or four of those things. things. I know you guys have been wanting size, 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 hitting, 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 hitting. The thing that makes me think that they won't do this is it appears to me that LA pays a lot of attention to analytics. And like I said over and over again, Josh Anderson's defense is awful. Analytically, and well, for me, I test as well, because before I ever look at the analytics, I don't look at analytics constantly all the time and make my judgment on something. I watch the games, I watch each player, and then I see if my eye test matches. And with Josh Anderson, it matched completely. All right, LA fans, sub yourself up. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Would you like yourself some Josh Anderson? And for how much? Sub yourself up to my YouTube channel there. Philadelphia Flyers. Okay. Philadelphia Flyers. First of all, by the way, LA has the cap room to do that. I forgot to look at that, but they do have cap room to do that. They can go many different ways with their cap space. They got tons. They got people they have to sign. They could not sign some, all kinds of stuff. All right. Philadelphia. Do they have cap space? No, they do not have cap space. Uh, but would they be interested in Josh Anderson? Almost certainly. Almost certainly. This is a team that pays a little to no attention to analytics whatsoever. Um, if they did, they would never have Rasmus Ristolainen on that team, ever. They never would have made that trade in a million years to get Rasmus Ristolainen. They have guys that are analytically good. They did pick up Ryan Ellis, who is a great analytics player, but I think that was more of a case of they saw Myers was just... I don't know what happened to that dude, but... Uh, stopped carrying or something. I don't know what it was, but something wasn't working out. It didn't work out in Nashville. And they saw an opportunity to get a player, even though they were crossing their fingers. He wouldn't get injured because a lot of people were pretty much under the impression that the rest of his career, he's going to be injured a lot. However, as a whole, they wouldn't have picked up James Van Riemsdyk if they were analytics driven at all. Um, so as a whole, it doesn't appear that they are. And they love big guys. Josh Anderson's a guy they know the fans will like. And it almost seems like the Philadelphia Flyers organization more or less does everything to make the fans happy. 
Because if the fans are happy and they lose, they can make up a whole lot of reasons why it did it happened, right? The, you they got all the guys the fans wanted, and the team lost. They, the referees, uh, you know, anything but the fact that we the players are just not very good overall. That would be the case. Seriously, that's what it looks like with Philadelphia. So, what would they do to get this deal? Well, they'd have to buy out James Van Riemsdyk first. They'd have to buy him out. That he's got what one year left at seven million. If they buy him out, they get they lose like six five point five get five point five million cap space this year and about four point five next year. And then they could trade again. If you get somebody like this, we talked about in the Forsberg deal. Scott Lawton's not really necessary. <coughs> you could you could put Konechny over there if in fact he's not part of the deal. The other thing you could do is make Scott Lawton part of the deal, right? Scott Lawton, as part of the deal, 28 years old, he'd be a body that they could use over there. I don't, I don't know. He's he's not he, he's not a bad player. It would cost way more than that. Um, I personally, if I'm going to do this, which I probably wouldn't, I would have Morgan Frost in the deal. I don't think his future really is in the NHL, but possibly, hopefully Montreal would. Um, so I, I don't think he's a great prospect. It's like, I know I hear people say, and he's only 23. Well, his, his trajectory does not look like he's going to be a very good NHL. Sorry. You can disagree with me if you want. That's fine. We'll find out, I guess. Um. And, you know, unless you're going to throw your first round draft pick this year, we're going to try not to do that here in this deal as much as possible. Noah Cates looked all right. That, the problem with this deal really is I, I'm just not sure they have much that's going to excite Montreal. Tyson Forst, Furster was a first last year. He has had problems injury-wise. He's a big guy that maybe might end up just like Josh Anderson. So why not trade him to get a Josh Anderson, I suppose, if you're going to do a deal like this. So I think the deal would look something like that and then a second-round pick. And like I said, buy out uh, Van, Van Riemsdyk, and you can put Konechny on the left side with Hayes and Anderson, Atkinson, Couture, and Farabee. Philadelphia fans, tell me what you think about a deal like that. I know you're going to love his pugilistic style. I know you're going to like his missile-like uh, type, missile-like hitting in the offensive zone. I know you, everybody everybody loves to watch that. Is it the best way to play hockey? I don't think so. If the guy's in your way, sure. But if you're going out of your way to hit somebody like that, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, quite often, you're just putting yourself out of position. Tell me what you think, Philadelphia Flyers fans. Would you do a deal like that? Sub up. And let me know. All right. This is the one. I'm putting New Jersey in here because this is the one that's been most rumored. And the reason why is, and if you talk to New Jersey fans, they find it very frustrating that they have players that don't play very physical. They actually have players that sort of back away from physical contact. They're super fast but they're not aggressive. They're not a very aggressive team. Dawson Mercer might change that down the road. Yeah, in fact, he already kind of has. But he's only really one in the whole. And, and it's true. They're not very aggressive. Jack Hughes is never going to be physically aggressive, aggressive. They were hoping that Pavel Zaka would be that guy for them, but he's not. He's just not that type of person. It looks like he could be moved to somebody in the off season, they're having problems up at appears with dollars and whether they even want him at all. It seems really, and I, I imagine he's big enough, young enough that they'll get some value out of that. But then they got to fill that spot. So we bring in Mr. Josh Anderson, and I believe he can play both left and right wing, right? Shoots. Oh, he shoots right. He's a left winger, right? So he would be a left winger. He would take that spot. Now you got a super aggressive guy to play with Jack Hughes to go, you know, bang some bodies in the offensive zone and make room, as they like to say, for everybody and stuff like that. Um, just like I said, 
you remember that you're giving up a lot defensively when you have a guy like this. So he's not helping your defense at all. If you're looking for, and I believe in New Jersey, the problem has not been their defense men. It's been their overall defensive game as far as forwards are concerned. And I don't think this helps a lot. However, tell me if you disagree with me out there, guys. I don't mind. Comment in the comment section. I'm a big boy. You get mad at me, whatever. I get lots of people come on and say, you're an idiot, blah, 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 blah. I'm fine with that. Totally cool with that. As long as you don't want to, as long as you don't mind going back and forth and talking, do whatever you want. This is hockey, boys and girls. If you can't take it, then don't be part of it, I guess. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, tell me what you think, New Jersey fans. Would you take him? Uh, what are you going to give up, right? Okay, let's look at what they're going to give up. You could do Pavel Zaka. Maybe they see more in Pavel Zaka than you do. Pavel Zaka back. I don't think that's going to be it. Uh, he, we made it clear earlier in the video, video it's probably going to cost a pick. You're not giving up your second overall. Maybe a second. Pavel Zaka and a prospect. I would say it would be like a B-level prospect. I don't think you'd have to give up like... Well, I've heard they've, they've kind of went off on, like, maybe not as big on Macamadoulin as they once were. That's a possibility, I guess, if they're not. Uh, Nolan Foot, somebody like that. A bottom, you know, Nolan Foot's probably going to be a bottom six guy. He's big as well. Uh, but somebody like that. They really looks like they've always been trying to trade Miles Wood. So... You know, which would be odd for me because if you're going to grab a guy like him, you might as well keep a guy like Miles Wood. Kalkinen, you know, some sort of package like that. Would you want Josh Anderson in New Jersey? New Jersey fans. Sub up, comment in my YouTube channel. Tell me what you think. Next. And finally, <coughs> the New York Islanders, which is mentioned in the article. I wanted to bring this up. Lou Lamorello pays no attention whatsoever to analytics. Fortunately for him, he had a great coach that made everybody look good. But analytically speaking, this team is not driven towards that at all. Um, so, like, you wouldn't pick up Kyle Palmieri if you're analytics driven. I know Zach Parise at one time in his career, maybe, yeah, but not now. Um, so, I mean, Josh Bailey's an analytics monster, but they, they, he's been in the organization forever. I think that's purely by coincidence more than anything. They do love guys that play like Josh Anderson, though. And I do believe that he can, like they're looking for a guy who can score like Josh Anderson scores. They always are. Do I think this was the best move for the Islanders? I don't. Could I see them doing it? Yep, I could. So what would it cost? Well, they they kind of soured on Beauvillier. He's 25, and he hasn't put up the points that he wanted to. Now, under Barry Trotz, trying to get up the lineup as a as a young guy is like, whew, it's next. It's like very very hard to do. I love Barry Trotz, but that was one aspect of him where I was like, really, really, dude. Um, so, maybe Beauvillier, and of course, I do believe going by the last name. He's from Quebec, so that would be a benefit to Montreal to do that. Beauvillier, I heard the first round draft pick this year they don't care about. And that might be it, but it's set a prospect as well. They don't have much for prospects. So maybe like Samuel Bulldog or something like that that's not really showing. He could play, but he's probably going to be a 5-6 defenseman or... You know, Atu Koibula for the fourth line, if they want to go that way. Big center that doesn't play all that big. Some, something like that. But I think they'd be really interested in Anthony Beauvillier. And I think Beauvillier would probably put more offense up in Montreal uh, with the type of game that St. Louis plays than what he then buried in the lineup with. So that would be my – I could see that play. That's why I wanted to bring this up. Islanders fans, tell me what you think. Would you do something like this? All right. Jeez, we hit 40 minutes now. I've had so much frolic here that I can't help myself. Just go on. But you guys watch lots of it. I see it in my analytics. Uh, it's really exciting. I'm so happy. All of you that have subbed up and enjoy this content. It's 
a lot of fun for me, and I'm glad it's fun for you. That's my full 42. Talk to you next time when we look at trades that may happen, free agency, and we'll even look at the draft on the NHL Perlo Wizard Show.